If there's one Flash game series I have nostalgia for, it's definitely the Blue Elephant series. My younger self would spend so much time playing the Elephant games, and every now and then I'd discover another one I hadn't even played before. In this new series I'm starting, we're going to take a look over every Blue Elephant game. Out of all the Elephant games to start off with, I chose one of the most famous ones. This is the only level. There's a total of three games in the series, tied with Achievement Unlocked, but there's also apparently a fan-made fourth game that I can't find anywhere. I don't know. Hey gamers, welcome back to XX underscore Elephant Gaming 72 underscore XX, and today we're going to be analyzing the game of one level. Let's go! This is the only level. Adventures in Singularity. Elephants sometimes do forget the rest of the levels. Ah, sweet nostalgia. The menu, the music, so amazing. Before we start, let's take a quick look at the description. This is the only level that was released all the way back in August 8th of 2009. And as of recording this video, it has 11.8 million plays, which just goes to show how many people were influenced by these legendary games. Description reads, the elephant forgot the rest of the levels, but luckily he still has one left. Help him beat it in all of his metagaming glory. Use your keen knowledge of gaming and dexterity to manhandle your way through a variety of challenges. Get your mind out of the box for once. Take it outside for a walk, or maybe grab a bite to eat with it. Oh, and beat the level. There's only one. The controls for the game are arrow keys, but I am not told to tell you any more than that. The elephant says so. This gives the elephant a bit of a threatening aura. Does he know more than he's letting on? Did he never forget the rest of the levels and then just, I don't know, hiding them from us? While the game only has one level, it has 30 stages. They're all the same level, but are slightly different each time. Out of the three official games, this one is definitely the easiest, and all the puzzles could be easily figured out without an online guide. Stage 1. Arrow Keys Required I feel like Stage 1 not only serves the purpose of teaching the mechanics to the player, but also to teach the player the general layout of the only level in the game. The player understands the layout of the game, it'll allow them to notice the differences easier, and lead to an overall better experience. You can also appreciate the open layout of the level. There's a lot of different ways to reach the button in the gate. While the specific layout of the level isn't utilized too often, it's still helps each stage feel like a completely different experience that has many different methods of completion, which makes it seem like a bit of a puzzle for speedrunners compared to a completely linear layout. There isn't much to say or do in this stage other than to press the button and enter the pipe to the next level. After you complete each stage, a green bar appears. Stage complete, but is the level over? This board is the exact same each time, so first time players won't have any idea of when this game will end. Stage 2, not always- Shut up, mouse. Stage 2, not always straightforward. There is no way I'm not the only person who dies every time on Stage 2. I hold down the right arrow from the previous stage, expecting that the next stage wouldn't have too many major changes, and the controls are reversed. This major change right at the start creates a sense of randomness and not knowing what to expect next in the player. While the reverse controls can take a few tries to get used to, it's not that difficult to complete this level, making it a good Stage 2. Stage 3, Think Before Doing Okay, I'll be first to admit it, I was a stupid child. I pressed the button before reading the title or seeing the exit, and I was surprised to see the door lock. Of course, dying resets the gate, but this is a welcome surprise, creating one of the more memorable stages in the game, despite just being a hold right to win. Stage 4, Alternate Control Scheme Anyone starting this stage probably pressed the arrow keys and watched the elephant do a little dance and not move an inch. With how vague alternate control scream is, when I played this stage, I mashed all the buttons on my keyboard and no dice. After a while, I clicked on the elephant and to my surprise, the elephant moved. This is the quickest stage in the game if you're speedrunning, as it just takes a quick mouse drag. Stage 5, Free Floating this stage is more of a fun stage than a challenging or a thought-provoking stage as it severely decreases the elephant's gravity. The gravity is so decreased that you can even jump from the bottom of the stage all the way to the top. Stage 6, a bit bouncy here. Similarly to the previous stage, this is just a fun stage, though more on the crazy side this time. Time your bounces carefully and you'll reach the next stage with ease. Stage 7, Dull Appearances. Another ambiguous title, so the new players won't know what to expect. Something you'll notice almost immediately is that your right to jump has been revoked. 
as it's surprisingly fun to do, you'll probably eventually touch a spike out of boredom and whoa, launch it in the air. I believe that the distance in the air you're launched depends on how long you touch the spike, like each frame you touch it increases your upward velocity or something like that. In fact, you can get enough velocity to clip through the wall by touching these right wall spikes and moving like this. Overall, a pretty memorable stage. Stage 8, Candy Stripes of Doom. I wonder if it's possible to get red and white together. Since the colors are different each time, I'll explain it this way. The color the tile you spawn on is safe to touch, while the other color is a no-no. This stage seems challenging at first, though it's a lot easier when you realize the only way the danger tiles can kill you is if you land on them. The sides and bottoms are safe. After some cautious platforming, safely enter the pipe to advance to the next stage. Stage 9, Arrow Control. Honestly, this stage's name is just pure deception. You can try to use the arrows, but they don't work. After the blue elephant doesn't move at all, you might move your mouse to go search for a guide and... Ouch! The controls in this stage work by scrolling the mouse horizontally to move and clicking to jump. Other than the elephant moving super fast with his mouse, this stage is not that hard. Stage 10, Heavy Headwind here. Considering you were probably holding the mouse from the previous stage, if you don't remember the order of stages you are a first time player, you'll probably rack up a few deaths once you start the stage. This stage is more irritating than fun as it's really hard to reach the button and really easy to accidentally fall down. This is also indisputably one of the longest taking stages in the game. Just focus on the task on hand and trek on and you'll slowly make it to the end. Stage 11, no returns, no refunds. Depending on your playstyle, you might not even notice a difference in this stage. A big change is that attempting to go left just doesn't work. If you get stuck somewhere, remember, the panic button exists, so don't be afraid to use it. Overall, not that much has changed. Stage 12, stay low. This stage is literally just hold right to win. The change is that you can't jump, so it's basically a less interesting version of stage 7 which had the bouncy spikes. Stage 13, Left Right March. As the stage's name implies, to play this stage you must alternate between pressing left and right to reach the end of the stage, kinda like a little animation. While there isn't much freedom to do much, the lack of free movement makes this stage very memorable. Stage 14, One Leap of Faith. Most players when reading the title will get the implication that you can only jump once and yeah, that's it. The stage isn't very difficult at all and some people actually normally beat stage 1 with only one jump so nothing changes. Stage 15, Time to Refresh. This stage confused a few players, but in order to open the gate, you need to do some out of the box thinking. You actually have to reload the game, click continue, and bam, the gate's open. Quite a unique concept, I applaud the developer for that. Stage 16, keep hitting it. This stage is pretty obvious on what you need to do. Hit the button 5 times and the gate opens, there's not much to say about this stage. Stage 17, worried about nothing. It's literally just stage 1 all over again with no changes whatsoever. Honestly a little disappointing, there could have been some visual gag appear on the screen after you press the button or something. Stage 18, Collapse. Yeah, another stage that first players are very likely to die on. As you land on the bricks, they collapse, and this is one of the more skill based stages. A fun little challenge is to try to get as many blocks to fall as possible. I tried this, but then I realized I sucked at the game. Stage 19, Stuttering. Dang it, my Wi Fi just dropped the one bar. This stage is pretty funny the first time you play it, but after that it just becomes annoying. A nice detail I like is that the timer stutters as well. Good work. Stage 20. <clears throat> Do you remember the 21st night of September? For those newer to the game, this stage can be challenging, but it's not that hard, especially since you can just hold right after pressing the button. Stage 21, in between gravity. Why is gravity spelled like that? I am genuinely curious. Is the person writing the title screen flipping gravity at the end of it? 
in between gravity! For this stage, the color of the tile you spawn on is normal gravity, and the other color is inverted gravity. If you're struggling for this stage, remember to take your time. It's a lot easier if you focus on which spot you're heading towards next and what direction the gravity will be. After some more gravity shenanigans, it's time to move on to the next stage. Stage 22, Mime's Folly. Let's be honest, no one who played this stage for the first time understood what the title meant. If you try to slide down normally, an invisible wall kills you. Come on, Mimes, what did this elephant do to you to make you put an invisible wall there? In order to pass this wall, simply jump up to the highest platform and fall down. Stupid Mimes. Stage 23, Center Keyboarder. Thanks to this game, I know the center of the keyboard is FTGH. In order to beat the stage, just use said keys instead of the arrow keys. Simple. Stage 24, UPPERCASE! As the name implies, you need to hold down the caps lock in order to open the gate, and my dumb self thought I should just spam the caps lock and jump to get through. For you Chromebook players, this stage should be possible if you search and alt together, but I'm not sure. Stage 25, when it feels like it. A speedrunner's worst nightmare, RNG! The door randomly decides to open or close, and there isn't a clear way on how to control it, at least I don't know a way to. I like to sit the elephants back towards the wall like the elephant in the gate just had a huge argument. Wait for the gate to open up and advance. Stage 26, or is it? A super simple stage, the gate is a faker. Just walk through the gate and the stage is done. Stage 27, credit page. Wow, this one's straightforward. Go to the credits page and a special message is waiting for you there. The back button reads, main menu and unlock stage 27 for me. The developer really knows that no one voluntarily reads the credits as the back button always says that even if you haven't beaten a single stage. Similar to stage 15, this level is very creative. Stage 20, whoa! That's a little close, I can't even see the title. This is kind of like a fun version of stage 20, as it relies on memory, but it has some fun visuals for you. The layout is the same as always, so this level shouldn't be too much trouble. This is one of my favorite levels, that it's super creative and memorable. After entering the pipe, you can finally read the title. Stage 28, oh ho, oh, so close. Stage 29, Closing Shop. Maybe the title is not only describing the stage's special mechanic, but also the fact that we're nearing the end of our journey. Said special mechanic is that after pressing the button, if you aren't fast enough, the gate shuts on you. Also, apparently just touching the gate after it comes back down will push you all the way back to the other side. We're about to enter the final stage. What could it be? Stage 30, No Sweat. This is the only subtitle with punctuation, if I recall correctly. Maybe the period signifies that not only the stage is ending, but the level is ending as well. You want to know what the final stage mechanic is? It's just an easier version of stage 20. If stages 20 and 30 were swapped, I think that would have been better overall. If stage 20 was at the end, it could have tested your true memory of the level, and it will show how beating the same level 29 times will cause your memory to kick in. And eh, oh well, it's the journey that counts after all. After finally beating level 1, the ending screen appears, answering the question that was asked at the beginning of every single stage. Is the level over? Yes, yes, yes it is. You have beaten the only level in the game. What was one level surely was more than that. We are very proud of you. We think you are really, truly special. As the game thanks you for playing, you might think that you've seen every stage that's in the game. But if you reload the page after you reach the end screen and then click continue, you can actually reach a secret stage. Stage 31, undefined. Call it a bug or an easter egg, it's still really fun to find. You can't beat this level, so you'll be stuck running around for eternity. Well, until you reset your progress manually. This is the only level is a very short but replayable game. In fact, I did a few runs and here's my best time. It's not very good, but at least it's under 4 minutes. The design of the game is simplistic, but it's one of the most recognizable and memorable game styles I've ever seen. While the elephant forgot the rest of the levels, I will never forget the blue elephant's impact on me. Make sure to comment which blue elephant game you want me to review next, which will probably be either This is the Only Level 2 or Achievement Unlocked. And I'll see you guys next time!
Thank you.